Leader of the Third Party. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I rise to speak to the Income Tax Amendment Act today. I appreciate the comments from both the Minister and the member for Kelowna Lake Country. This legislation provides a temporary increase to the renamed BC Family Benefit, and the increase will be available from January to March 2023, and will provide enhanced payments to about 75% of families with children in BC. We will be supporting this legislation. British Columbians are facing desperate times, and the public is struggling. Housing is increasingly and consistently unattainable, Groceries are expensive, gas is expensive, childcare is expensive, everything is more and more expensive, and people are not making enough money to make ends meet. This is, of course, having disproportionate impacts for vulnerable and marginalized communities, those who are disabled, people of color, single parents, poor people. So last month, this gov government announced an affordability package that includes this temporary increase to the BC Family Benefit. The problem is that it's a band-aid on a bullet hole. It's short-term half-measure. Studies, including the basic BC Basic Income Panel, commissioned under the Confidence and Supply Agreement, emphasize that consistent, ongoing, reliable social services and supports are more impactful than temporary measures. That's because consistency allows households to plan. It's a lot easier to make and maintain a household budget when you can rely on the money coming in. I'm doubtful that affordability issues will magically disappear at the end of March 2023. With the windfall profits being reaped by oil and gas companies, the new billionaires minted through the pandemic, the profits of grocery store chains, the housing crisis, the system is not changing. If anything, it's gotten worse. I want this government to take a hard look and reevaluate their decisions. I want them to look at the systemic changes that need to occur, not just a small temporary handout that will leave British Columbians stranded come April. BC has legislated targets to reduce poverty. By 2024, two short years away, this government, according to its own law, is supposed to have reduced the overall poverty rate by at least 25% and the child poverty rate by at least 50%. I'd really like us to see us meet those targets, and I know the public would too. But I can't say that I'm confident, because when it comes to other accountability legislation, the Climate Accountability Act, the government is actively breaking their own law and not on track to meet their targets. If this government were serious about meeting its legislative poverty reduction targets, it would have brought in consistent, ongoing, permanent changes. It would have acted on the recommendations of the Basic Income Panel, invested in non-market housing options, increased the disability rates, removed clawbacks, raised shelter rates. There are no shortage of things that can be done. And I hope to see long-term, permanent options put in place for the people and families of British Columbia who are struggling enormously right now. Thank you.